All right. Sorry, everyone. It's a little late to get started. Thanks for waiting for us to get through the study session. Um, so with that, we'd like to call the Planning Commission meeting of November 6, 2013 to order. Can I get a roll call, please? Chairman Jennifer Whitman. Here. Vice Chairman Joshua Ayler. Here. Commissioner Anthony Bianchi. Here. Commissioner David Cavani. Commissioner Chad Fuller. Commissioner Bridget Peterson. Here. Commissioner Christopher Sippel. Alternate Kyle Paul. Here. Thank you. Can I get an approval of the, the agenda, Vice Chairman? We've got some changes here, so everybody uh, take their pens out and pay attention. Okay. Um, I just had that. Would you like mine? There we go. So moving uh, non-consent items that are being requested for continuance would be item number 11, 12, 13, and 14. And to consent? To consent. Okay. And 15 and 16 to consent. But only items 11, 12, 13, and 14 are for continuance. So 11, 12, 13, and 14 are requesting a continuance to the December 4th meeting. And then 15 and 16, we're moving to the consent agenda um, with the staff recommendations provided therein. Chairman Whitman, I just had a question. Sir? Um, the agenda does not say that item 14 is requesting a continuance. Correct. We just heard from the applicant prior to the meeting that uh, they're requesting a continuance to the December 4th meeting. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, um, and then so that would leave agenda item number 17 on the public hearing um, non-consent oh. portion of the agenda. We, have, we might be moving one from consent to non-consent. Okay, I think we can, in which one? We can we can right, and we can, this is just approval of the agenda, so we can go ahead and make these changes and then deal with these cards at that time. So we keep 14 on the agenda? Uh, I think we're moving it to consent until otherwise. Okay. All right, so that's your motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion by Vice Chairman Ayler, a second by Commissioner Peterson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, moving on, agenda item number seven, a communication from citizens. At this time, members of the public may comment on matters not on the agenda. The commission's response is limited to providing, responding to criticism, asking staff to review a matter commented upon, or asking that a matter be put on a future agenda. Do I have anybody here wishing to speak under those circumstances? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the public hearing consent portion of the agenda. Uh, consent public hearing items will be heard at one public hearing. After the consent public hearing, these items may be approved by a single motion. At the request of a member of the commission or staff, an item may be removed from consent calendar and may be heard and acted upon separately. Other items on the agenda may be added to the consent public hearing and approved under a single motion. So right now we have uh, agenda item number eight, which is S13-10, which is a preliminary plat and open space plan in Morrison Ranch. Uh, case or agenda item number nine, which is UP 13-15, a conditional use permit um, for public facilities or an existing, to in upgrade the antennas on existing uh, tall monopole. Uh, case agenda item number 10, UP 13-16, which is a conditional use permit um, to permit modification of an existing wireless communication facility. Uh, Agenda item number 11, GP 13-16, which is the upper center for Agritopia. Agenda number item, agenda item number 12, which is Z 13-27, which is the companion zoning case in the upper center for Agritopia. Um, again, both of those are requesting continuance to the December 4th meeting. Agenda item number 13, Z 13-12, um, which is the companion zoning case for the Agritopia um, project, also requesting a continuance to the December 4th meeting. Agenda item number 14, which is GP 13-07. It's a major general plan amendment for property located at the southwest corner of Higley Road and Riggs Road. Uh, agenda item number, and that's also requesting a continuance to the December 4th meeting. 
agenda item number 15, which is GP 13-12. It's a minor general plan amendment to clean up um, a land use map in the town's um, general plan map um, located at 395 West Columber Avenue. And agenda item number 16, which is Z13-22, which is the companion zoning case for the previously referenced uh, general plan case. Um, so with that, we also have uh, a couple of cards up here. Uh, one is for GP1307, which is the uh, major general plan amendment. Uh, Bill Brothers, is, are you present? Um, do you still wish to speak to this matter if they're requesting continuance, or would you like to come back in December? If you'd like to speak, we can we can certainly we can certainly hear you. Okay, um, if you if you wouldn't mind coming up um, and giving me your name and uh, city of residence for the record. My name is uh, Bill Brothers. I live in Gilbert, uh, near the uh, in the Seville subdivision. Um, I, I travel a lot for work, so that's why I, I figured I'd better go ahead. So I don't know if I'll be here. Okay, <laughs> great. So. I didn't realize last time I could use PowerPoint. I don't know if I remember from last time I was a little uh, uncomfortable doing everything verbally. So I, I, you know, I love, well, I do a lot of PowerPoint for work. I don't really love it, but still, here we are. So, you know, one thing you can do, you know, there's things that you can do, there are things you can undo. Some things are much more difficult to undo than others. Uh, engineering being, you know, one of them very difficult to, to undo. Um, uh, and zoning is also something that's very difficult to undo. Um, so again, my name is Bill Brothers. I live in Seville, a pretty typical resident, you know, college educated. I work for a software company that specializes in computer simulation. Um, I like to complain and I like PowerPoint, so here I am. Um, okay, so summary. Um, Allowing the commercial development of the land would certainly um, would improve home values. It'd make it a more desirable place to live. It would certainly improve my quality of life. We wouldn't drive around nearly as much, and of course, you know, decrease energy consumption by reducing driving uh, it would be good for everybody and everything that goes along with that. I would like to argue that the commercial space at Riggs and Higley is is unique in the area. There is no other regional commercial nearby, and if there is a zoning mistake, there's really no undo button for it once it's developed. So I'd like to assert again that the South Gilbert is really a retail desert. Um, as, I, as I said last time, you know, the 2010 census data, you can find pretty quickly that the average for Maricopa County and Gilbert is about 12.7 people uh, per business establishment. When you get down to the zip code where we're trying to, you know, rezone, now you're looking at 131, actually 132 people per business establishment. So that's one-tenth the availability of business establishments in that area of town, which would certainly qualify as a desert. Um, I took another look at this, looking at retail square footage per capita. And again, I came up with something you know, very similar. You know, US average is 46.6 square feet per capita. That is um, a little high, as many would argue, uh, but that's what it is. In, uh, if you look at the anything south of uh, Chandler Heights, you're looking at less than a tenth of that. So uh, my argument here is, will the internet provide for 91% of the retail needs in the region? Okay, so uh, last time, uh, the gentleman from Vestar gave a terrific presentation, gave me a lot to think about. Um, they mentioned there is retail zoning in the area, but it is, um, it's scattered, it's broken up. And so what you end up with is, um, you know, you end up with maybe a bank and a drugstore in every corner. There really isn't a, um, a regional uh, uh, zone. You know, so, so really we're missing, you know, everything else besides, you know, grocery stores, banks, drugstores, fast food, uh, because it's, it's broken up. Okay, so if you look at North Gilbert, you know, this is a, um, this is your zoning map. Of course, you know that the areas in purple are the regional uh, commercial. Red is, I think, general commercial. But in any case, if you look at the, if you find all the regional commercial, there, there's a lot of them. Okay, they're, they're scattered all over. And if you notice, they're scattered pretty evenly. Okay, and then of course, you've got you kind know, of the mother of all commercial here in the, uh, the Santan, uh, Santan Village, which is you a know, terrific, terrific resource. 
However, if you look south of Gilbert, take Germain South, and you look, you're going to see one regional commercial site. Okay? And so my argument here is if you rezone that, you know, is that going to make it better? <laughs> right? If you take that out, that's it. There's no regional commercial south of Germain. In fact, I, I'd further argue this, this is, again, contributing to the uh, commercial desert of uh, the South Gilbert. All right. Now, zoning a commercial certainly does not guarantee commercial development. There's nothing you can do to force a vendor to come in and place a store. But if you zone it residential, it will make it impossible. Okay, so how many parcels in Gilbert have been rezoned after they're fully developed? I don't know. I haven't lived here long enough to tell, but I suspect probably not very many. Uh, so it really is kind of a one-way decision. And uh, I'd like to ask, have we really run out of space for new houses such that we have to start rezoning our only regional commercial land south of Germain? Uh, I suspect maybe not. I think there's plenty of space for houses still uh, available. Uh, but again, dear resident, there's not enough traffic to sustain a regional commercial center. Uh, that may be true, but will that today, but is that always going to be true? And again, you know, Gilbert's probably going to be here for quite a while. The decisions you make are going to last. If you look at the map from, you know, 42 years ago, I wish I could find an even number year, but there's not many old maps I could find. You look 42 years ago, there's not a 101 or a 202, and there's not even much of I-10. You know, is Gilbert going to be here 42 years from now? Probably. So can you guarantee me that there's never going to be a regional highway south? You've already got a spur going down to Mesa Gateway. Can you guarantee that that will never happen? That we'll never see a highway on uh, a Hunt Highway? Maybe it won't happen. There's obstacles, of course. But, you know, over time, over a long period of time, I think uh, transportation is inevitable. Uh, but dear resident, you know, Costco, Walmart, Target, they all have locations that are too close. They're not interested. Uh, out of the box thinking won't work here. We heard that last time. Yeah, you know, again, that may be true. Maybe Walmart doesn't want to buy a space there. But, you know, they're not necessarily the only um, game in town. You know, there may be other, other things. I'm no expert. I have a full-time job. I, I don't sit around and do this all day. But, you know, just, you know, talk with my wife. What would we like to see there? You know, what about a themed area like, you know, a Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, you know, Crate and Barrel, you know, things like that. And maybe farmer's market to generate traffic. You know, you could really create a viable um, uh, commercial center in the South Valley, uh, which would attract South Chandler as well as Queen Creek. Or, you know, go with a different theme, Hobby Lobby and Michaels and all those kind of things that uh, the stores I really never like to go to. Um, but again, I'm no expert. I'm just a fan. <laughs> So what are the demographics of the area? The area is full of new and expensive houses, right? So you look at the expensive house, generally the people buying expensive houses tend to be more affluent. Um, their new houses are bought re recently, so that means after the recession. So these people are still employed generally. So they survived the recession. Um, when you go through buying, house, buying a house, you've all bought a house before, I'm sure, and you know the financial scrutiny you go through whenever you try to get a, a mortgage. Uh, so generally, these people that have bought these new houses are in pretty good shape. So they're affluent, they're employed, they've got good credit. I don't think you could ask for a better demographic than that, other than you need more of them. Okay, so my summary is, you know, the area has solid demographics. You know, there, I don't think you can guarantee that there'll never be a highway in the region. I, I don't think we're out of residential land, which necessitates rezoning it to commercial to more residential. It, considering that South Gilbert is a retail desert already, and there's no undo, you know, once you rezone it and you build houses on it. So that's really all I had to say. I don't know if I can ask for questions, if that's... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brothers. Um, is there any questions or comments for the speaker tonight? Okay. I, I re he did a great job he did. two weeks ago when he spoke to us, oh, too. Oh, I missed that presentation, okay. but... We really appreciate you coming down here and taking the time and putting together a great presentation for us. Um, I know that some of the commissioners um, are absent tonight that will probably be here at the next month's meeting. Um, so if you aren't available, available to attend that meeting, I'd suggest that you maybe work with staff and send them your thoughts and even your presentation, if you, if you don't mind, oh, no. so that they have the opportunity to review the information you presented tonight. 
Okay. Well, I, I've uploaded the presentation, so feel perfect. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. All right, and with that, I also have another card that I skipped over, and I apologize for that, for case UP13-15, um, Nikki Reber, who says uh, she's in favor of the item and, and, wishes, and wishes to speak. Um, does she, do you still want to speak if we are? Okay, come on down. If you can give your name and uh, city of residence for the record, that would be great. Nikki Reber, Gilbert, Arizona. Um, I don't have a problem with them upgrading that tower. It's on the property just directly south of me, but I simply wanted you to be aware that right now there is a legal issue with Sprint being able to bring their fiber optic cable through my property, and there is no other way to get that cable into that tower except through me. Okay. And so if you want to go ahead and, you know, approve, make a motion to approve, let them tell them, you can do whatever you want with the tower. It ain't going to do them any good if they can't get that cable in there. <laughs> and uh, right now, they cannot. I appreciate that. Well, the, uh, this obviously, um, if we were to approve this tonight, um, obviously they have to work through their own private agreements um, in order to make that happen if this were to be approved. So I appreciate you coming down. Thanks. For your comments. Y'all have a nice night. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so with that, I don't have any anybody that wishes to speak on any additional matters, so do I have a motion? Um, Madam Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda as presented this evening here on the dais. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Peterson, a second by Commissioner Bianchi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. And uh, unfortunately with that, I have to um, excuse myself uh, from the rest of tonight's meeting, but we'll turn the dais over to uh, Vice Chairman Ayler, who will leave you in good hands. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So our first agenda item that we'll speak is item 17Z-13-25, an amendment to the ordinance and number 1665 pertaining to the Central Christian Church planned area development. Is the applicant here? Or oh, I'm sorry, not the applicant. Al. <laughs> Staff first. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chairman Ayler. Uh, this is Central Christian Church. It's a rezoning. Uh, um, it's more than a modification of the existing Central Christian Church pad site. It's really a brand new pad site. Um, for the for the project, again, Central Christian Church started uh, 157 acres located at the southeast corner of Lindsay and Germain Road. What they're currently requesting uh, is three different aspects of this uh, to have a brand new pad site. And it's actually going to be called Central Christian Church of the East Valley on 57 acres, and they're going to rezone this property from the current SFD SF7 and 8 to one single zone, which is SF6, brand new. Uh, amended development regulations for the site specific to the needs of this uh, development and there's a new development plan so here's the property it's at the northwest corner of the quarter section southeast corner of Lindsay and Germain you can see the existing church there the three zoning districts which correspond are SFD SF7 and SF8 immediately to the east is a new project called Copper Leaf which is a 35 acre residential development the church still owns a residual 64 acres, which is located south of the site, south of the church site, that they're currently in the process of rezoning, but um, it's not been specified to date whether that'll be for subsequent phases of residential development. Very well may be, but there's been no definitive decision on that by the church at this point. Again, here's the site, zoning on it, SFD, SF7, SF8. Surrounding zonings are SF6, 7, and 8 in the surrounding areas. This is a new zoning exhibit, and it shows the 57-acre property, which, as I mentioned, the three zonings, is now going to a single zoning SF6 with a PAD overlay. There is a total of nine buildings being uh, shown on the site for a total of over 400,000 square feet, including item number six there, uh, building number six right where the arrow comes in. And that's going to be, a, I think, is a 3,500-seat uh, new worship center. And the, old, the existing worship center would be used for other purposes, I believe the youth building. 
the three new buildings uh, being proposed, actually four beside the worship center, up in the northern side adjacent to Germain. That's a new multi-purpose building. On the west side, building number nine is a new uh, church office building. Uh, toward the corner is building eight, a new uh, chapel, I believe, and then also building five, just west of the worship center would be a new uh, classrooms building. So we've uh, kind of uh, been aware of Central Christian Church all the way back to 2001, where it started out 157 acre large scale church. In, in 2012, I mentioned Copper Leaf. Uh, that area got rezoned to allow four residential development, uh, SF6, SF7, and SF8. Uh, to, this, to this stage, uh, only 35 acres, the first phase of that's been developed for residential purposes. The other two phases I mentioned are probably coming up down the line, but again, not definitively decided yet by the church. Uh, so after, after that zoning, we have the 57-acre church campus, uh, Central Christian Church of the East Valley. And this request is to remove that uh, portion from the existing PAD, which still covers the remaining acreage, rezone it to SF6, and provide for a new amended development standard. So essentially, this is what we're going from, those three districts, to 57 acres of SF6 on the site. Existing and future expansion, I've kind of gone over that with the future buildings which are being proposed. Uh, the buildings in dark are the existing ones, and I've mentioned uh, there's four there right now and a total of nine buildings, so that would be an additional five buildings proposed for build-out. Uh, substantial parking fields around the church, you can see that on each side. Some 1,800 parking spaces would be, would be developed on the site, exceeding the requirement, required minimum of 1,700. Part of the amended development standards include building setbacks and landscaping around the periphery. Uh, the church is requesting modification to the setbacks and uh, landscaping. The 50 by 250 arterial intersection you can see on the inside one is, uh, is still maintained, so that will always be there, uh, uh, arterial intersection, landscape area. The setbacks, the frontage of the site is actually on Germain Road. The required setback there for building and landscaping is, um, is like 35 feet. And what's being requested is to allow buildings to go up to 20 feet of the property line if those buildings are less than 30 feet in height. And then if they're over 30 feet, a minimum of 30 foot setback. In addition to Germain and Lindsay Road, we have internal roads which cir uh, circle the site. That's known as Lovebird Lane on the south and Concord Street on the east. Those would also have similar setbacks of 20 feet landscape and building setback for buildings under 30, and then that would increase to, I believe it's 30 feet for buildings over 30. There's actually a building height plan which is associated with this request. The, um, they want to be, the applicants, developers really want to be specific as to where the additional height would be, long term working with the neighbors to maintain the height to just what's required, a new worship center. 3,500-seat worship center, more or less, is uh, the tallest building, 65 feet. You can see that in the crossed hatch toward the uh, lower right. The other buildings would be the office building on the uh, west side, along Lindsay. That would be up to 50 feet. The main campus is allowed at 45 feet, which is the current base height allowed for the church. And then all the other areas where there's non-buildings, everything out of the vertical hatch, all the parking areas, all the open space areas, the applicant is actually proposing to maintain a maximum building height in agreement with the neighbors under previous cases of 25 feet. So they're very selective as to where the new buildings would go and only minimizing the amount of additional height over and above the 30, the 45 feet already allowed by the zoning case, uh, by the base zoning district. And um, that would be incorporated into the development plan. Uh, the amended development standards, I've pretty much gone through them. The importance of the 50 by 250 foot arterial landscape corner is maintained. 45 foot building heights would be increased up to 65 feet, very specifically as we mentioned. Increased number of parking spaces between landscape islands, uh, location of parking lot light poles, and use of parking lot diamonds uh, in lieu of some of the parking lot landscape islands which are being um, increased distance-wise, uh, and there's also a decrease in the amount of bicycle parking. 
I think I've gone through most of the points of discussion here. It's a brand new PAD. It um, contains amended development standards reflecting the current development and the expansion request, expansion um, vision for the uh, Central Christian Church of the East Valley. And staff feels that they are reasonable in terms of what's there now and what's being proposed, the site location, etc. cetera. A uh, total of nine buildings, four, uh, four existing, nine new ones. Make that five new ones. Worship center height being increased. Uh, landscape setbacks to reflect what's out there now and um, the intent is to uh, reduce the impacts to the extent possible on the surrounding neighborhoods. No objections have been received to date. With that, staff recommends approval of the application and I'd be pleased to answer your questions. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Al. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Bianchi. Now, I have no objections over the use. I was just kind of curious in the discussions with the applicant. Um, why they're going that way, they're requesting SF6 when it's not even one of the existing categories they're in, and if it's tied to just overall church related development, how they came about to get to SF6. I believe the applicant is here to answer that question. Okay. I can save that for him, sure. <laughs> Great. Thanks. That's it. And I just want to mention along those lines that staff did request from the beginning that a single zoning district be provided. And we did go through the range of different possibilities, and that was the one that they selected at, and staff felt that that was a reasonable, reasonable district. Thank you. Great, thanks. Any other questions for staff? All right, thanks, Al. The applicant, please come up, state your name, city of residence. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, uh, Vice Chairman, members of the Commission, Brennan Ray, 702 East Osborne, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, appearing on behalf of the applicant Central Christian Church of Arizona. Um, I certainly, as, as Al has indicated in his presentation, I'm going to make my comments even briefer and hopefully answer your questions, uh, Commissioner Bianchi. But uh, this is a simple request from our perspective to consolidate the various zoning districts that have existed on the property in light of development that has occurred. Uh, throughout and with the sale. In fact, probably the best exhibit, if I can get, I think this is a, a great exhibit to uh, try to explain the question of why one zoning district. And as you look uh, clearly to the uh, east of the, the church piece and to the south, um, you have a variety of zoning districts that were approved in 2012 in connection with the 99-acre zoning case that went through then. The 35 acres up near Germain and directly east of the site is the copper leaf development. As you can tell from looking at this, it is zoned SF6. You've got SF7, 8, and then 7 and 6 wrapping your way around the site so that at the end, when you look at the, the church campus and the remaining 57 acres, you'll see that what existed was a mix of D, SFD, SF7, and SF8. So at the end of the day, as staff indicated, we were asked uh, to pick a horse to ride. And if you look at the surrounding area, kind of look what's across the street, southwest of the street, you can, or southwest of the site, you can barely make it out, but they're SF6. So we thought SF6 made the most sense uh, in terms of when you looked at the residential districts around the area and certainly one that would be less troublesome for neighbors that were looking on a map. Um, so that's why we went with SF6. Under either scenario, uh, we are governed by the non-residential uh, development standards and regulations that would be permitted for a church within this type of a zoning district. So um, again, we're, we're certainly appreciative of, of Al's presentation. Uh, we've worked hand in glove with a lot of uh, various departments from planning to traffic to engineering to make sure that this uh, amended development plan uh, and bringing it under the LDC as opposed to remaining under the ULDC uh, works for everyone and, and we've again appreciate everyone's work on this and would certainly would request this commission's approval in accordance with staff's recommendation. Commissioner Bianchi, I don't know if you have any other questions or if any other commissioner has a question relative to that. If I didn't answer the, your question as to why, please let me know and I can try to explain and clarify a little bit more. No, I, I did have one question, but I think in based off of Al's presentation, I think I may understand it. So you're coming back, you're asking for a PAD. So if it's all church related development tied to that planned area development, it could not develop as a resident straight residential SF6. So uh, is that correct? Correct. Through the yeah. Vice Chairman, Chair, uh, uh, Commissioner 
Bianchi, uh, the, the notice of public hearing that is included within staff's report and that ultimately will be, uh, I believe, included in an ordinance. I'd defer to, to legal as well, but that is very specific in what it is that we're requesting to be approved. One of those things that if you were to look on the last line, and I, I could throw it up on the Elmo if we needed to, but we are requesting that, that it be a single zoning district under the LDC and modify the development plan. So because we are requesting a PAD overlay, part of that PAD overlay requires a development plan, I, I believe. Uh, and so the whole package will lock us into the development plan that Al has indicated on here uh, that's shown on this exhibit with the buildings and the parking field and all of that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ray. No, no other questions. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Ray? Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other questions, Al? Okay. With that, we'll open it up to the public. Um, do we have any comment cards or anybody else that wish to speak on this matter? No cards up here. Okay. Okay. With that, I see none, so I'll close the public hearing and bring it up to the dais. Okay. Does anybody have any comments? I'm, no. I'm fine. I'm ready for a mo I'd make the motion if you're ready. Yeah, I Chairman. think everything was covered this evening. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so if there's no further discussion for the reasons set forth in the staff report, I would move to recommend approval of the town council for Z13-25 uh, as requested, subject to the conditions listed in the staff report. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Bianchi, uh, second from Commissioner Powell. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that leads us to administrative items. Number 18, I got a bunch of paper in front of me. Uh, okay, number 18, the minutes, consider approval for the minutes of the study session and regular meetings from October 2nd, special meeting from October 23rd of 2013. I'm not sure how we're gonna do this because I was not present at the October 2nd, so I'd recuse myself. I was there for the meeting at October 23rd, but I think then that would only leave a vote of three, so. Do you guys just continue it, or how do we do that? We have to continue it. Okay. So, do we just? So then, did I just go ahead and make a motion that we continue the minutes from October second to the December fourth meeting for the study session and regular meeting? That would be fine. Okay. Then I'd, go I'd ahead. Say, and do we so all, then you, we're all here for the. All four of you can vote on the, on the motion to continue. Okay. okay, so yeah, so I move to continue the um, minutes from October 2nd for the study session and the regular minutes to the December 4th meeting when we have more commission members present. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to second that? I will second that. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I have a motion for continuance for item 18. I only part of item 18, oh, it's only just October 2nd. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> for just the meeting minutes for October 2nd. I have a motion from Commissioner Peterson and a second from Commissioner Bianchi. Do I have all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Passes 4-0. You want to go ahead with the other motion? Yeah, were there any changes for the meetings? The I did not see anything. Commissioner Powell? No? I didn't see any. Um, so if there are no changes, I would move for approval of the study, uh, the special meeting on October 23rd. Second. I have a motion for approval of minutes for October 23rd. A motion from Commissioner Bianchi, second from Commissioner Peterson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes 4 0. And, um, oh, do you want to move to the next item? Sorry. Uh, moving to item number 19, which is planning commission administrators uh, consider approval for the 2014 regular minutes. I mean, regular meetings, not minutes. I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve the schedule as presented. I'll second. 
have a motion from Commissioner Pearson, a second from Commissioner Bianchi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4 0. Have uh, communications. Uh, item number 20, a report from members of the Commission on any current events. Um, I don't have anything. I s I'm sure that the council member does, so I'll let her, I'll defer uh, to great. her. Great. <laughs> Um, moving to item number 21 report from Council Liaison. Thank you, Vice Chair Whaley. Um, a few things to report to you. The first one is that tomorrow is our vet Challenge Veterans Day uh, event and it'll be held at 11 a.m. and lunch is at noon and it's right here out on Town Hall's lawn. So great event, annual event that we have. Um, 154 single bu family building permits were issued in the month of October. So we continue our growth pattern, which is fantastic. Right. Um, the town council did approve a new definition for political signs, and it did end up being more broad than the one that you had approved. Um, the current, uh, the new language is that a political sign, we've redefined the definition of political sign, it's a temporary sign designed to influence the outcome of an election called by a public body. And that is the extent of the language. Um, the Gilbert Days Parade. Gilbert Days is coming up. Lots of events surrounding Gilbert Days, Pony Express, Rodeo, um, the annual parade that we have, and that will be on the 23rd from 9, essentially 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then following that from noon until 9 p.m. right here on um, the lawns at Town Hall, there is a red, white, and blue festival, which will be great fun. Our grand marshals for the parade this year are all of those individuals that we've honored for Operation Welcome Home. So it's going to be a great festive community event. We're excited. And then also, if you haven't seen Street of Dreams yet, you must go see Street of Dreams. It's pretty incredible. It's at the White Wing at Germain Estates. It's south of Loop 202, east of Greenfield Road, on Germain Road. Um, and it runs from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday, and that will go on until December 1st. If you have family coming into town for Thanksgiving, that's a perfect thing to take them to. The homes are absolutely incredible. So with that, that concludes my report to each of you. Thank you for your staying power tonight and for your ability to get things done. We sure appreciate your efficiency. Great. Thank you. Uh, item number 22, report from planning service manager on current events. Our council member just covered everything. Great. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you. With that, I would adjourn the meeting. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn.